Mayor's rebuke, Mayor London Breed of San Francisco's rebuke, could signal the end of democratic, socialist, radical politicking in this city, activist says. And when you see activist, it's one of the good guys because he's a recovering drug addict and he's like, you know, you're going to have to do some arrests. And right now, Mayor London Breed is saying, we're going to have to use some force. Woo. And the San Francisco supervisors, especially the ones on the far left, they're saying, oh, no, we can't do that. We got a report right here that says, yeah, this is going to impact people of color. That's not good. So we can't do it. And she's saying, "Mm, let's get into it. Let's see what she says. Here we go. San Francisco Mayor London Breed fired back at leftist city council who criticized punitive drug policies. By punitive, he means actually arresting somebody for selling dope, for dealing dope, you know, out in the open, or consuming it. Just open air drug use, which is what most of the tenderloin has become. And so in order to kind of reel this back in a little bit, San Francisco is actually arresting some people. Now, will that have any impact? Depends how far they go, right? Depends how far they go. But you, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to take some people off the streets and oh these far left activists. Oh, we got this study. Bunch of knuckleheads. But this is who this is who the people of San Francisco voted for. And that's why we're hearing Mayor London Breed say stuff, and she's going in the right direction. But will it have any impact? Does she have the political will to push through when the citizens say, hey, you are arresting far too many of our citizens, our fine, fine citizens, for doing drugs, for dealing drugs? We can't have that. We need to just let these people roam around because the dodge the human fecal matter game on the sidewalk, that's what we really enjoy here in San Fran. You know, it's it's a mentality of the voters in San Fran. It's created this situation and, in my opinion, will also allow it to continue in spite of the mayor apparently taking a little bit more of a hardline stance. San Francisco Mayor London Breed's verbal sparring match with the city official over the role of police in fighting the drug crisis could signal a tone shift, according to one cautiously optimistic activist. That is, and thank you to the individual who posted this on our Reasonable Plus uh, Discord channel. If you want to send a um, a storyline to me, that's the easiest way to do it because I just copy it right from there and it ends up on my computer and I read it. So Discord channel, it's free. Go there uh, if you want to post a, a topic. And um, I've been talking about this topic quite a bit, which is Mayor London Breed. She, you know, came in on a little bit more of a tough on crime stance. Even though crime hasn't, you know, exactly been reduced during her uh, her time in office, but she's working towards what some might believe to be a little bit tougher stance on drugs, because that whole tenderloin thing and the whole just open air drug use has just gotten so out of hand. I mean, I've covered how many businesses that have closed down with proximity to the tenderloin. I mean, I, I've personally covered dozens, right? And, and it's ongoing. AT&T just recently said, yeah, we're going to take out our flagship store from Union Square. That's a no-go. The um, Westfield Mall is going back to the bank. The owners say, yeah, we don't want this. It's only half full. We're not making any money. We can't make our mortgage payments. Here, you take it. Hot potato of a mall. Yeah, I don't want it. You take it. It's literally what you've got going on. Uh, And the other example after example after example are businesses, and oftentimes they've got other stores in the greater San Francisco area, just not in the proximity that the store they're closing down is to the tenderloin, is to the drugs, is to the drug dealing, the selling of stolen goods, the robberies, the break-ins, the, you know, bash and grabs, the dash and grabs, whatever you want to call it. You got an out of control uh, portion of a city, major North American city. You got homelessness. I mean, you name it, you got it. And the mayor is doing a little pushback, a little pushback. It sent a message, I think, to San Franciscans that the age of this kind of democratic, socialist, radical politicking in San Francisco is coming to an end. Recovering addict turned activist Tom Wolf told Fox News. Tom Wolf, you will see him on the streets. He's kind of like a Jonathan Cho, but he's. Um, 
uh, he, he covers a lot of the same stuff just in San Francisco. So I've, I've seen his name multiple times and, and, um, I believe he's got a, uh, an opinion that is worth listening to breed recently committed to cracking down on open air drug markets in San Fran and announced during a board of supervisors meeting on Tuesday, that police made 38 arrests in about one week during a question and answer period. Supervisor Dean Prest- Preston criticized Breed's approach as contradicting the city's 2022 overdose prevention plan, stating that black, brown, and indigenous communities nationwide have been disproportionately impacted by racist drug policies. You got to do something. You got to arrest these folks. I don't care what some report says. You got to start arresting them. It's the only way you're going to make the city safer. No, you can't arrest your way out. That's not going to happen. But you got to drop the hammer, even if it's just a little bit, to start getting that momentum going the right way. And you know what? A lot of these folks, they need treatment. They need treatment. So, yeah, it's a double, you know, multi, multi-headed approach. And will it actually amount to anything? Who knows? Who knows, right? Cautiously optimistic? Maybe. 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 Self-described democratic socialist, that's the supervisor, also suggested punitive policies would lead to more overdose deaths. That, to me, uh, they're saying throwing people in jail is going to cause more ODs. Because then they're going to come back out and they're going to use at the same level they did when they went in and they're going to die. How about we recommend people don't do drugs? How about instead of handing out clean needles and tinfoil, how, how about we just say, you know what? You really shouldn't be doing that. But that's not what the patrons of, of San Fran are all about, are they? No, they're more harm reduction, which states, let people do what they want to do. If, they, if abstinence is not part of their deal, then let them keep doing it. The issue I have there is it's killing people. That is not compassionate. And it's it's impacting the whole city. And taxpayers, the legit taxpayers, have to pay for it. They're funding all of this silliness. I mean, in Seattle, we, we've had so many 911 calls for fentanyl ODs. I mean, and, and in Portland as well. I mean, it's just... In Portland, the average cop, I think, does probably about five ODs a day. That's that's what I'm kind of hearing. I mean, it's a massive amount of resources. So when all those cops and EMTs and firemen, when they're dealing with the the, the fentanyl overdose deaths or overdoses, you know, shoving Narcan up people's noses, when they're dealing with those, they can't come help you when you've been robbed because the same people ODing stole from you to pay for the drugs that they're ODing on. How about that? Yeah, that's not reasonable, is it? No, it's, it's ridiculous. But this is what the citizens of San Francisco vote for. They voted for these nonsensical supervisors like Dean Preston, who just head up ass. I mean, that's all you can say there. This guy's head is just straight up his ass, as a lot of these supervisors are. Many of you would say that about the same thing about the mayor. Yeah, you might be right. Here we go. Another white man. Here's what London Breed said to him. She was like, shots, shots fired. She was taking some shots. Here we go. Another white man who's talking about black and brown people as if you're the savior of those people and you speak for them. That was that was wildly accurate, Breed responded. She then defended law enforcement as a necessary component of fixing the city's drug crisis. Huh. Weird. We're going with law enforcement? Didn't we just defund the police? Weren't we all rah, rah, rah for defunding the police just a couple of years ago? By we, I mean San Fran and Seattle and Portland, and a bunch of other knuckle-headed Democratic-run cities. Yeah, that's that's been the deal, right? And then all of a sudden, <laughs> a year after that, London Breed is like, we need to double the budget for the police officer. We need more cops up in here. We need them badly. And most mayors were not on board, with the exception of like, uh, oh man, Ted Brown down in Portland, uh, just, oh, what are you even doing there? Um, most mayors, I think, recognized the issues with defunding the police. 
I mean, that's just, that, you don't hear defunding the police anymore. What you'll hear is Black Lives Matter. You will still hear that to people who haven't really followed that storyline and realized how far out of line that group is with the overall concept of actually Black Lives Matter. You know, everything kind of gets politicized and taken away from its original context. And yeah, and, and then you end up with a couple of black kids being murdered in CHOP, which was supposed to represent Black Lives Matter. Like, okay, that's not, that's not ending well. At the end of the day, when we need to make arrests because someone's breaking the law and needs to be held accountable and could potentially be forced into treatment services, I'm going to do so, she said. Oof, wow, what do we got going there? Really? She's got to do something, right? She came in on a tough on, on crime stance. Hey, my predecessor, I just let things just go straight to hell here in San Fran. We're gonna we're gonna toughen this up. We're gonna tighten this up. So this is this is the words. Let's see if the action backs it up. Wolf was addicted to heroin and homeless. He's the activist that is basically saying these things and kind of giving our analysis. Wolf was addicted to heroin and homeless in San Francisco's Tenderloin district in 2018. He said his sixth arrest landed him in county jail long enough to get clean and reevaluate his life. Now he is a recovery advocate and has often criticized Breed and other government officials. I think there's a lot of room for criticism because look at how many businesses have left San Fran. Yeah. 90, over 90 in Union Square alone. That's just Union Square. And that's due to its proximity to the Tenderloin. So, which is just overrun with drugs, open air drug market. Even though she was right on Tuesday, talking about the mayor, a lot of what we see that's happened in San Francisco happened on her watch. So he's kind of saying, hey, she's saying this stuff, but this is also her fault. Let's, you know, let's be reasonable. She also has to bear some responsibility for that, Wolf said. Breed joined a chorus of liberal mayors across the country who diverted funds from police in 2020 after the murder of George Floyd in Minneapolis. The next year, Breed reversed course and announced an emergency request for more money to bolster the police department and address crime. Hey, what a what an about face. All right, politically, this is where we need to be. Defund the police, greatest concept ever. And then crime just spikes and whoa, that didn't work out. Well, let's try something new. How about we give more money to the police? I mean, what a time to be alive, right? I mean, can you make up these stories? You cannot. You cannot. Because you know why? People wouldn't believe you. They wouldn't believe you. Wolf added that Breed's response to Preston's questioning was somewhat performative, meaning she's putting on a show, right? But it definitely needed to happen. It 100% needs to happen. And she is approaching it from such a such a soft shoe standpoint. Like the police are literally just doing what they should have been doing all along on a really really small scale. You know, you want to come out and just start arresting some people like they did in uh, New York City back in '79 when Rudy Giuliani kind of came in and started cleaning out house. You know, it got to the point where drug dealers and people doing all the criminal activity, they just didn't want to be there because they're put in jail for long enough where they're like, nah, I'm going to move along. I'm going to go to another city. Maybe this isn't for me. Maybe the Big Apple isn't in my dreams of criminal activity. Maybe I'll go somewhere else. Maybe I'll go to Seattle. Yeah, we got people coming to Seattle from all over the country because they know what a shit show it is here. You know, drugs are a free for all. Criminal activity, a free for all. Our mayor here, Mayor Bruce Harrell, trying to reel it back in. Uphill battle. We've got a all we got the all, major league baseball. We got the all-star game coming here in July. It should be interesting. It should be interesting, right? Because they always clean up cities. Literally, we have citizens out cleaning up our city right now because they're trying to make it look good for the baseball games, for the all-star game. Because the city can't do it. The citizens have to do it. What are we paying taxes for? Where's our taxpayer dollars going to? Oh, they're going to booty bump kits where if, you know, you can't reach a vein with your whatever drugs, put it up the backside. It'll work out. Yeah, it's better for you. Harm reduction. All harm, no reduction. San Francisco residents have complained for years about rising homelessness. 
and yet they haven't really voted accordingly, right? It's like Chicago and their mayor. What are you guys doing? You went for another progressive mayor? Come on now, folks. You need to get a clue. Even in San Fran, you've got a couple of moderate supervisors that just made the board. I mean, they're they're actually making moderate decisions, meaning not just absolute whack job, but it's going to take so long to get any traction and it's going to take so long to turn things around. We'll see, right? And the way that people vote in San Fran, their ideology, I mean, they think one thing and then reality is another and then they just can't get off that thought, right? So San Fran residents have complained for years about rising homelessness, crime, and drug use in their neighborhoods, but they don't vote accordingly. The coronavirus pandemic sparked a mass exodus from the Bay Area. And while the flow has slowed since the start of the pandemic, San Fran County still lost 9,421 residents last year. Well, a lot of that is, um, if you haven't been following my podcast, it's you had that whole work from home thing. And the Bay Area, San Fran has a ton of tech workers. Don't know if you knew that or not, but um, more than Seattle, you know, they're a tech hub. And so when you've got all these folks that can work remotely, that's what they did. And they, they left the downtown core. All right. If we no longer have to have proximity to downtown because we're not working there, we're going to go to the burbs. And that's what they did in record numbers. But that happened in a lot of downtown cores. But now trying to get people to go back into downtown San Fran, into downtown Seattle, into downtown Portland. Portland is one of the worst along with San Fran as far as activity within the downtown core. And we know this due to cell phone activity. How many people are walking around, talking on their phones, doing texting? You know, what's the activity like? You know that because of, of, of cell phone data. So San Fran and Portland being two of the worst offenders, it's because they had a lot of tech workers. And in Portland's uh, case, the downtown core is a much bigger version of the tenderloin from the standpoint of it is spread all throughout downtown and nobody wants to work there. Nobody wants to work there. It's as simple as that. So the coronavirus pandemic sparked it. Uh, San Francisco is they're losing residents. Portland, same thing. Multnomah County, same thing. You've got an out migration going on. Some of it has to do with economics. Other has to do with desirability of living in downtown. And so these mayors are, you know, they're coming up against these huge pushback. Yeah, we don't really want to live next to the homeless people who are breaking into our homes and trying on our clothes during a fit of fentanyl, you know, highness. That was a story from yesterday that I read. It's like some guy just whacked out on drugs, broke into somebody's house, you know, tries on their clothes, sleeps in their bed. I mean, how many times have we seen that? These people are, you know, nut jobs on drugs. I dropped off a uh, friend of mine the other day. When was it? It was Wednesday, a couple of days ago. It's Friday, Friday, when I'm recording this. And um, I took him to the ferry in downtown Seattle. He lives in downtown Seattle. He's got a condo there. He's got a medical practice there. But he was taking his ferry over to one of his other homes on Bainbridge Island and uh, so we had to go right downtown and follow the ferry route. And it was interesting. I said, I haven't been down here in a little bit. And he goes, yeah, we're heading down James. Let's go down James. It gets a little rough towards the ferry. And I'm like, okay, yeah, I, I get it. I, you know, he knows that I, he, he follows some of my podcasts as well. And um, so we're driving down to the ferry. We're about a block away from the ferry. We're on James and fourth Avenue, I think right in the heart of downtown. And we come across this, we're one block away from the ferry. And this is where all this traffic is, you know, cause people, you know, commute via ferry all day long. And uh, there's just this big group of people on the corner and I'm driving along. Well, that's a group of people just smoking up Fetty right there. Just this big group of people. I mean, just open air drug use. I mean, just so blatant. Like, oh, that's not good over there. You got tents packed around just right on urban, you know, massive building and just a bunch of tents. So, yeah, and then across the street on the other side, you know, I'm just trying to drive and get my buddy to the ferry before it takes off. So he's like, pull over there. And he's sprinting to get to the ferry because he doesn't want to wait for the next one, you know, like a ne another hour wait. 
And um, as we're doing this little gyration, I'm looking over and there's a dude and you know, Seattle streets are like San Fran. They are steep. That's where I learned to drive a stick shift. Not an easy task. I mean, it's steep, you know, to really be able to work that clutch. And I'm looking over and there's a guy that's sweeping the concrete surface with his bare arm in just these huge motions. His arm is just all black, no shirt on. I mean, he's just whacked out of his mind. Nobody wants to be around that. It's just like, what is going on? These people are just nutso. And they are. And it's far left liberal policy that's gotten us there. So far left progressives and socialists have controlled politics in Golden Gate City for years and drove San Francisco into a ditch, Wolf said. Our downtown is cratered, he said, pointing out that the city's most prominent mall recently opted to default on its loan and hand its property over to lenders. They walked away because they lost confidence that shoppers would return to this town. Yes, but I think short term, they had to make a decision and they decided to pull out of basically the U.S. and shopping malls because shopping malls are dying. But In this case, in most cases, they're able to sell their way out. If we're going to exit strategy, we're going to cash in. We're going to take our equity and say, thank you. And we're going to go back to France. We're going to do some investing in France because it was a joint partnership. But in this case, in the Westfield Mall, they handed the keys back like dude in lieu of foreclosure style. Just, all right, here's your keys. Good luck with that. Getting on the plane, going to France. Bye. Yeah, they didn't sell it. Basically, they stopped making payments and it's getting foreclosed on. Wolf, the activist, the good activist, though, said progressive politicians can blame the pandemic only so much and that public drug use, crime and homelessness have exacerbated problems downtown. You have to start thinking about maybe it's bad policy combined with bad leadership that equals bad outcomes. That guy should run for office. He's on to something there. He is truth telling. We're kind of scraping the bottom right now, and hopefully there's nowhere to go up from here. I agree. I do not think San Fran has bottomed out. I do not. I don't think we're even close. You've got this time period where you're going to be going hard on the arrests, and it's not going to have much of an impact. That could be a year. That could be a couple of years. I don't know. But you've got a long period of time where you're going to, you're going to be butting up not only against voters, but against, you know, how things have been handled, district attorney, you know, city attorneys, citizens who are all, ah, we just love our fellow human beings so much that we're okay with them sticking a needle in their arm and dying on the sidewalk. We're all right with that. Yeah, it's okay with us. Compassion. You know, they go down those roads, this whole, harm mitigation. And it's just, you know, it's so backwards. Get my clean needle. They're going to do it anyway. We don't want to get infected with hepatitis. You know, and they're dying of overdoses. All right. So yeah, I didn't give them the whatever disease from a dirty needle, but you did give them the dirt nap forever. Mm, Yeah, not good. Not good. So this whole policy thing, it's going to take a long time to kind of, you know, kick back against that. And when these arrests start, I mean, you're going to have some major pushback because, you know, things have been going so swimmingly in San Francisco for the voters. They are okay with this kind of thing. They say that they're not, but their votes say otherwise. Now, again, we do have two moderates in San Fran and we got a mayor who's doing some big talk. We'll have to see where it goes. Cautiously optimistic. I am not even optimistic. But I will podcast on it. I'll, I'll give it that much. I think it is worth a, a talk about it. And that's kind of what we did today. So in the back of your heads, when I'm reading all these stories about all these companies say, yeah, I, I, I think we're going to service our clientele elsewhere other than San Fran. You know, in the back of your head, be thinking, all right, all right, but here's what's, here's what's going on trying to move in that direction, trying to get to a state of reasonable. Is it going to happen in our lifetimes? God, I hope so. But again, I don't have a lot of confidence because the way that, you know, leadership has gone and like supervisors like these that are so ingrained into the ideology of San Fran 
and you know they want to blame everything else well blame the pandemic that's a perfect example for what we're talking about you can only blame the pandemic for store closures for so long and that's what we heard coming out of the pandemic well we couldn't make a go of it couldn't make our rent pandemic and that's just not the case right because other areas are keeping their stores open you know business in texas has been off the hook two thumbs up business in florida has you know they never shut florida down really right so everybody went on vacation during the pandemic they're like yeah i don't know what you jokers are thinking but we're staying open and so san fran along with seattle along with you know oregon and la they all just shut they all just were super weak and oh, we're gonna shut down and and they did. And, you know, things just got way worse because you didn't sweep the homeless encampments. More drugs have come across the southern border. And I think everybody's recognizing, all right, fentanyl coming across the southern border. We're not doing anything about it yet. But everybody at least recognizes, OK, yeah, that that actually might be that might be a thing. Yeah. All the drugs getting manufactured, China shipped in Mexico, Mexican cartels, assembling them, shipping them up here, shipping them to the, the dark web, you know, people putting them together up here, people putting them together down there, the cartel and moving them up here along I-5. That's why San Fran, Seattle, and Portland, I think, are poster children for the fentanyl crisis because you just got a main line coming right up I-5, up Interstate 5. So, you know, why wouldn't we? Meanwhile, Mayor London Breed, a little bit of pushback on what's been done consistently in the last few years in San Fran, or probably the last 20, 25 years. When did it start to get so bad? When did San Fran start to get really, really bad? Was it like 15 years? Was it 10 years ago? Was was the, the demise? Because I remember visiting there not that long ago. Yeah, it was rough. I mean, certain areas of town were rough. But not like this, not crazy town like this, not tenderloin just whacked out of their minds, you know, like this. And with all the stores leaving, it wasn't like that. I have to go back in time and figure out maybe it was maybe it was closer to like 15 years ago I was there. Don't know. But all these stories, yeah, not so great for San Fran. It's a city in flux. It's a fluid situation, shall we say. All right. Hey, we've got merch on our, that's the end of the podcast, by the way. We've got merch available for sale, including Seattle Real Estate Podcast mugs. You guys asked for them. We're giving them to you. Why is it taking me so effing long to get merch going? Well, if you want to stick around, I'll talk about it for a second. Um, I focused on the channel. I focused on the channel. And really getting the channel squared away. And it has been squared away. And we had some pretty major adversities to overcome. We started off as a real estate channel. Don't know if you knew that. Seattle Real Estate Podcast. And then we switched it into a news channel. When you do that, all of the benefit you get from all those stories you did as a real estate guy basically goes away. So you got to start over from the standpoint of the algorithm of YouTube and Google recognizing your workflow. And it's taken me kind of this long to get things dialed in so that now I'm recognized as somewhat of an authority on a lot of these storylines. And now I get pushed out because if you say something enough and enough people believe you and watch it, it grows and it builds. So I've worked on that instead of, hey, buy my merch because it's not about the merch. The merch is for you guys. It's not really for me. I don't make a ton of money off that. I'll make a little bit of money, but it's also a lot of effort to put it together. But it's a branding process, so it's advertising as well. But it's also kind of cool too. So we're going to bring back uh, you know, some Seattle Real Estate Podcast merch, and we got a whole bunch of other stuff. Should be a link in the description. Check that out. Thanks so much for being here. I will catch up with you soon. Until then, talk then. Bye for now. <laughs>